Well, hello everybody, Max of Max's Models here. I hope you're having a wonderful evening. I'm down here in beautiful San Juan, Puerto Rico, and I brought a road build with me. This is the Frog 172nd scale Sepicat or Sepicat Jaguar. And for those who are unfamiliar with the Jaguar, a very quick history. In the 1960s, the French and the English got together and decided to design a somewhat basic uh, jet strike aircraft with a nominal dogfighter ability. And although the airplane they came up with, the Cat Jaguar, was considered too complicated by French standards and too simple by British standards, it did nonetheless become quite the successful platform. It had a trailing link gear, was designed for operation off of rough fields, sort of in the Soviet design era, low pressure tires and the like. But it actually really was a pretty modern airplane, although it was also a very manual airplane by the standards of the day. It didn't see service until the 1970s, and it took a little while for it to grow on the respective services, but they wound up making export versions of the aircraft, and about four other air forces bought it, and the Japanese kind of quasi-copied it when they couldn't work out a deal on a license to build it. And the airplane is unique in that the British version, I believe it was only the British version, could mount a couple of air-to-air -air missiles on top of the wing, as you see in this picture. So there's a real quick and dirty background on the Cat Jaguar. And by the way, the reason you've never heard of any other company made by Cat was it was a one-off conglomeration that was put together uh, just to design this one aircraft for this one project. And Actually, it wasn't even really a company. It was more like just an organizational structure. So the kit that's made by Frog uh, came out according to Scalemates in 1974. I found it pretty easy to assemble. The instructions were clear. Not too many parts. There's no cockpit detail, but as tight as that cockpit is, there's really not much detail you'd be able to see anyway. What's really neat about the kit is it gives you the option of making the 2C trainer version, which by the way was also the prototype and the first one to fly, or this single seat uh, attack or version. Now, you only get the what I call the pointy nose version. The Jaguar had numerous configurations. This is just one of the early ones. And that makes sense given that the kit apparently came out just about the time the airplane had entered service. The fit was relatively good, but there are no guide pins and that led to a little trouble uh, getting things to harden while staying aligned. I was using uh, to me, a uh, quick drying, uh, very thin glue, which made things proceed a lot faster. And the kit has its pluses and minuses like any other. Uh, I didn't realize what this weird looking thing on the front of the fuselage section was uh, until I realized that's where the rear pilot sits uh, if you're making the uh, two seat version. And well, I guess actually he goes there for either one, but I was doing the two seat version. But in the two seat version, the forward pilot just sits on the floor. And he does have separate ejection seats, although the pilots are both identical, as you would expect from a mid-1970s kit in this scale. And the door panels, I decided to make it wheels up because it came with a really neat stand. And this stand, as you can tell by the hole that's cut in it, is designed to be able to be used either as a desktop stand or a wall hanger, which is, given how I'm running out of space in the tarp, is probably what I'm going to do with it. I think that's just neat. In fact, I'll bet you there's a little secondary market for somebody to go into business making stands that can double as either a wall hanger or as a, a desktop stand. And of course, it has a little ball joint on the end so that you can articulate it some. Uh, you do have to cut out the slot in the bottom, though, for the stand to fit into. I decided to make it wheels up on the stand, although it does come with the articulated trailing link landing gear. Oh, well, it's, I say articulated. I, it, it's one piece landing gear in the kit, but the actual jet it articulates. That's what a trailing link gear does. Anyway, uh, you only get one option on the ordnance, which are these uh, four rather large missiles, which look really good on it. But again, probably in line with uh, when the aircraft came out. So there's not a lot of ordnance options, but I'm not normally a huge ordnance guy, so that didn't bother me. Personally, I think the airplane looks better clean, but everything fits so well and so easily, I decided I'd go ahead and put them on just to see how they look. Um, that's Pretty much all there was to it. The nose section, uh, of course, assembled separately. You get two canopies, one for the single seat, one for the two seat. And the only difference in the two is which nose section you put on the airplane. 
There was one part that was really molded poorly. That was the spike on the end of the nose. When I tried to trim it, it broke. I do have to warn you that this plastic, this styrene is fairly brittle. I had a couple of pieces break when I used, including the arrestor hook, which the way it mounted, you can't tell. Uh, and yes, the Suffolk Cat Jaguar had an arrestor hook for runway landings. They, they do use those sometimes. Although there were some uh, carrier operations when the, I believe it was the French Navy considered using the Jaguar and they ran some tests. So they did operate briefly off of carriers, but they were not adopted. So anyway, uh, the airplane really went together without much argument. Uh, the speed brakes and gear doors, except for the nose gear door, uh, fit without any problem. Nice tight seal. I'm actually kind of impressed. I didn't have to do any filing on them other than just removing the little spur left from where I clipped it uh, off the tree where the gate was at. But uh, that's, of course, obviously common. Now, that took three seconds to file those down, and then they just dropped right into place with no argument. I, I really was quite happy with the fit of everything. The seams are kind of noticeable, but then again on par with a kit from the 70s. The detail level is adequate. Uh, I really don't have much to say about the kit. It was just a straightforward build. It did not take that long to put it together. Not overly complicated. Uh, each wing was one piece. Each tail section was one piece. So uh, you get the decals for several different countries. Just is what it is. Now, it, I didn't realize how long the airplane is. So once I got it together, I was afraid it wouldn't fit in the box. And actually, it did. In fact, the base of the stand made a, a pretty good holder for it. But the tail was a little too tall, so uh, I've got it carefully nestled in there. It should survive transport without any problem. The fin was molded to one half of the fuselage, so the, I couldn't remove it for, for transport. But that's okay. I'm sure this will do fine. So when I get it home, of course, uh, I'll put some putty in the, in the cracks and everything. And uh, one of the things that made this go so much more quickly with all the filing and everything, just getting, which wasn't a whole lot, was the kit that Orange Tabby sent me, the road build kit. That's really been, he just had all the right tools in there. It made things go much quicker. So a shout out to Orange Tabby for uh, uh, making that kit for me. It, it really did make this go easier. The uh, Tamiya super thin uh, quick drying glue also sped things up. There is one little booger boo, not a huge deal. I'm sure I'll cure this with putty, but on the bottom, this kit was made to be posed gear down. And since I posed it gear up, uh, the I had to file the nose gear door a little bit to get it fit, and that I got to warn you, this plastic grinds off pretty quick. I wound up over grinding, and it was just a few strokes, but it, it wound up over grinding that nose gear. A little piece of styrene, probably just a little a little bit of putty, will take care of that without any trouble. So uh, again, I had to file down some of the seams to get them flush, but they they look like they're pretty good. So once I get it home. Uh, Pop the canopy off, it's just tack glued in place, uh, paint the interior, get the pilots in there, mask off the canopy, and then I can shoot the paint, decide what color I want to make it. I'm thinking about sort of making it like the prototype aircraft since that seems to be what it resembles the most. And uh, also, as you can tell, us, I had some documentaries going to keep me motivated and keep things straight, learn about the airplane as I was working on it. Uh, which is something I noticed a lot of us love to do. It makes perfect sense. You know, nothing like building a model while watching a documentary about it. And, uh, but whatever, uh, I might give it a pretty generic paint scheme. We'll see. But uh, not a bad little kit. Uh, no complaints. Uh, everything fit okay. And one neat little thing they did was we all know how uh, companies will put uh, box art of other kits they have for sale. Uh, on the side panels of the boxes. Well, they did this not only an outside box, but when you open the box, there's more advertisements for more of their kits on the inside, which is uh, pretty cool. And it's not as cheap as you would think. These printed boxes were a substantial expense. So kudos to Frog for coming up with that little marketing idea. Well, that's about all I've got on this one, guys. And thanks for watching. And as always, model on.